<laughs> Good evening, everyone out there in baseball land. We've got Medina Valley Panther baseball coming to you live tonight. We're at Southwest Dragons Field over towards McDonough. Again, we're at Southwest Dragons Baseball Stadium. We've got a beautiful day here. If you can see the picture, we've got a great field conditions. We've got a turf field. Panthers in the second round of district play in their second game of district play, holding on to a perfect record so far in district. We'll stop for a second here. Test, test, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Test, test, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. And now, your Southwest Dragons. Test, test. Test, test. Testing volume on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. All right, welcome to the Valley Broadcast Network. We're at Southwest High School, the Dragons Baseball Stadium. We have district action for you tonight. We have Medina Valley taking on the Dragons from Southwest, as I just said. They're doing the introductions right now. And after we do the introductions, they'll go into the National Anthem. We'll take a break after that. We got a little bit of a late start getting everything set up. I am trying to do this computer audio all at the same time by myself so and I got a little bit of help for you this is Wayne Garza here with Johnny Guzman he's going to be trying to learn the ropes so I will apologize in front here saying that we will have a couple of hiccups but we can get through it and hopefully have a good broadcast for you tonight yeah I'm not much help yet Dwayne but I'll get there that's no problem <coughs> you, what's the old saying you get what you pay for <laughs> that's right so Medina Valley coming into this game with a perfect 8-0 in district <coughs> record. Southwest right behind them, however, in second place by themselves at 6-2. McCullum at 5-3. Hardendale 4-4. Eagle Pass win at 4-4. South Sand 3-5. Southside 1-7. Southwest Coach, Legacy 1-7. So those are the district uh, standings. Medina Valley with a not-so-comfortable two-game lead on Southwest. So they've got to keep rolling here, doing a good job playing ball here so far, rolling in district play. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick break here for the National Anthem, and we'll come back with live baseball for you.
Welcome back to Dragon's Field. Getting ready to get started. Just had the national anthem, and I'll, we're going to start it up pretty quick. So I'll start with the lineups real quick. We'll start with the Medina, visiting Medina Valley Panthers. Leading off will be number 10, playing second base is Dusty Davis. He'll be followed by, sec by the third baseman, Wesley Stevens, number one. Batting third for the Panthers is going to be Manny Ramirez, playing right field, number 11. Batting cleanup for the Panthers is going to be number 18, the designated hitter, Justin Mayer. Mayer will be batting for Noah Magallanes, will be on the mound tonight for the Panthers. Following Mayer will be number nine, the catcher, J.D. Blair. Number 14, the shortstop, Michael Newton, will follow. He'll be followed by number five, the first baseman, <coughs> Ryan and Marty. Following Marty will be number 15, the left fielder, Jaden Krieger. And batting ninth for the Panthers tonight will be number two, the center fielder, Gavin Rips. Again, Noah Magallanes will be on the mound tonight for the Panthers. And batting for him will be the designated hitter, Justin Mayan. For the Dragons, their lineup goes as follows. Number eight, the center fielder, Joe John Gonzalez. Batting second is number 11, the shortstop, Julius Castillo. Batting third is number 22, the third <coughs> baseman, Romeo Castillo. Batting fourth in cleanup is number three, the catcher, Miguel <coughs> Arias. He'll be followed by number 16, the second baseman, Brandon Castilleja. He'll be followed by number 30, the right fielder, Joaquin Zamora. He'll be followed by number 24, the designated hitter, Matthew Pena. He'll be followed by number 17, the first baseman, Joe Guzman. He'll be followed by number 14, the pitcher, Alex Urico. And batting ninth with Dragons, number two, the center fielder, Jaden Alfaro. Got excellent baseball conditions tonight. Sun is setting behind us, right behind home plate. I got a clear sunny day, just a slight breeze blowing from right field to left field. Not very, not very breezy tonight, so it'll be perfect conditions for baseball. So leadoff batter steps up into the box. That's number 10, the second baseman, Dusty Davis. Davis, right-handed batter, steps in. First pitch from Alex Rico is on the way. Rico's pitch is swung on, fouled <coughs> down the third baseline. I think they've been using Rico pretty much, uh, quite a bit this year. He's a sophomore. He is a sophomore? Yeah, he's a big boy. Davis ready for the 0-1 pitch, and it's on the way. It's going to be low and outside to even count at 1-1. One and one. One, one pitch on the way to Davis. Swung on, fouled. Ooh, it's mm. fouled off the toe of the catcher. Wow. He's grimacing a little bit. That has the smart. Davis just barely missed that ball. Count will go to 0-2. Panthers wearing their black tops today with the white pants and black socks with the orange trim across the front <coughs> and the numbers on the back. Dragons tonight wearing all white with green pinstripes and green numbers. Wearing black caps tonight. Sun may be hurting the uh, first baseman a little bit. It's kind of yeah, it's right in his eyes. Yeah, there. it's right in his eyes right now. Davis getting ready for the one-two pitch. Pitch Enrico on the way. It's a curveball. Oh, a little curveball. Let's see little what he does. Shortstop. Shortstop. Oh, mishandles it. He mishandles the ball. He That's had to come up running hard, and he knew he had to throw on the run, but just kind of mishandled the ball. Try to throw it before he got it. A lot of Davis to reach first. Davis did a good job of running through the bag. <coughs> so with Davis on first, that'll bring to the plate third base and number one, Wesley Stevens. Stevens, right-handed batter. Stevens with a, a good outing again last game. Last game, a couple of games, he's been hitting the ball really, really oh well. Oh, yeah, he really did. Swung oh. on the miss on a low a little outside there. on the little outside bit, corner. A little bit of too aggressive there uh, for <coughs> Stevens on the swing and the miss. Davis with a comfortable lead over at first. Rico's going to check on the runner. Kick and throw. Right down the pipe. The Let's see if they can turn. They're going to try to turn double play. They got, uh, they got the lead runner, one looks out. like. Oh, one out at oh, second base. Got him. And he called him out at first. That was awfully close. That was awfully that. close. So they do turn the double play. 
Wow. That was awfully close. Looks like Coach Bipper did not agree with that. No, I wouldn't have either. Post play first, all the way, go, they get two outs, work the double play, and that'll bring to the plate number 11, the right fielder, Manny Ramirez. Ramirez swinging a very hot bat playing right field tonight for the Panthers. Done a good job the last couple of games. Had a key hit last night. <coughs> See if we can get him started again. Oh, there he goes. Swung good shot. Pitch, Let's see if that can get center over. Fielder. Center fielder camping underneath it to get the yeah. third out. So Ramirez flies out to center field. And it'll be three up, three down. So we're getting ready to go to the bottom half of the inning. And I will try to work the computer board here. And we'll come back after these messages. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459. Right now at Chevrolet's three-time dealer of the year, North Park Chevrolet. Get 15,000 off MSRP and 1.9% financing on new Silverado 1500 trucks, plus $2,250 in trade assistance cash, and 7,000 off MSRP on new Blazers. Lease a new Equinox for $299 with zero down or buy for $23,999. Get 2.1% financing on all new Traverses. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Welcome back to Panther softball here at Dragons Field. Panthers top half of the first inning, send three batters up and three batters go down as they go three up, three down. Being aggressive, swinging the bat right now, so that's, that's a good sign, just couldn't get anything to fall. Dragons will come up here in the bottom half of the first inning and they'll send up to the plate the center fielder, Jojo Gonzalez, the shortstop, Julius Castillo, and the third baseman, Romeo Castillo. Apparently those two are brothers, Julius Castillo and Romeo Castillo. So Joe John Gonzalez steps to the plate. He'll be a left-handed batter. A lead off left-handed batters can be dangerous. Anything's possible, drag bunt down the third baseline. Defense needs to be aware. First pitch is right. Ooh, it's gonna be ball one. I thought it was See the um, strike. The right fielder's got his hand up in front of his eyes there, got his shades on preparing for maybe a nice pop-up out there right field for this left-hander. That pitch is going to be low. <coughs> I think the count's 2-0. and oh. The scoreboard is not helping us out, that's for sure. Magellanes on the mound, pitching from the windup for start off this bottom of the first inning. Oh, that's that a pitch good is pitch. Be inside. Oh, so three and oh, pitch. oh, my goodness. That was a nice-looking pitch. Right down by his knee there, but it looks like he's not going to give him that low Gonzalez. inside pitch. Gonzalez steps back in with a 3-0 count. I'm assuming he's going to be taken here. So Magallanes needs to lay one in here if possible. Pitch on the way. Oh, that's, that's right, right down, down the, the pipe. Yeah, That'll bring beautiful. The count to three and one. Exactly what he had to do. Magallanes with a good outing a couple games ago. He really did. Got he, the win. He ended up with eight, eight strikeouts that night. Yep, no. He did very well against Eagle Pass. 3-1 pitch on the way. Oh and that's gonna be ball four. <clears throat> that umpire's got a tight strike zone. It really does. Johnny. Yeah, he wants something up by the waistline there. Those were all kind of low pitches and he he's not giving him that low pitch. So Gonzalez draws a walk and that'll bring the play to shortstop <laughs> in 11, Julius, Julius Castillo. Castillo. Castillo step in, a second left-handed batter. 
two lefties in a row. Two lefties in a row. Depends. Let's see if a Dragons play small ball here and try to bunt this guy over. Pitcher Malyanis yeah, on the squares way. Up squares up for the bunt. bunt. Bunts it right back to the pitcher. Malyanis feels it, throws it over to first base to get the sacrifice out. So Castillo sacrifices. Yeah. Gonzalez moves over to second base, and that will bring to the plate the third base, number 22, Romeo Castillo. So Castillo steps to the plate. Gonzalez standing on second base with one out. So now Magianis forced to pitch from the stretch. Magianis, big, tall, right-handed pitcher. First pitch on the way. Right down the pipe. That's the one he wants. I think he called that inside. He sure did. He did not call. Yeah, he did. Oh, my goodness. Well, my gun is going to have to adjust. Next pitch on the way. Curveball swung on. Ground ball to second base. Second Mason feels it. Davis throes over to first base for the out. So easy two now. ground ball. So ground out to second base for Castillo. But it does move the runner over third base. So the Dragons will have Gonzalez standing on third base with two outs. And that'll bring to the plate their cleanup batter, number three, the catcher, Miguel Arias. Well, we got a right-hander up. Let's see how that changes things. Right-handed batter steps in. Magallanes back from the windup. <coughs> First pitch on the way is going to be a breaking pitch for ball one. Let's see if he throws that inside pitch that he had so much success with against uh, Eagle Pass. Next pitch on the way is going to be right yeah. in there at the knees for <coughs> strike one. That's the first pitch he's called at the knees. Hopefully hopefully he'll be consistent with that call, and that'll yeah. even the count at one and one. Magianis with the 1-1 pitch. Ground ball to third base, third base and Stevens. Throw over to first base. High throw to oh, first nice base. Oh, nice grab Marty by Marty. Jumps, Marty jumps in the air and brings it down for out number three. Oh. So the Dragons will bring <clears throat> three batters, I mean four batters up to the plate, but they will leave a runner on stranded on third base, and that's going to do it for the first inning. Yeah. My game's uh, going to be tied 0-0. Zero, zero. So we'll take a quick break and come back after these messages. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Have you ever made a friend by accident? I know I have. This is Alec with Lone Star Towing of Natalia, and I just want to let y'all know that I pay top dollar for your junk, wrecked, and abandoned vehicles. I can even come to your location and tow it out of there at no extra charge. Give me a call at 210-777-0585, and I'll be sure to get you taken care of quickly. Welcome back to Panther Baseball, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and Dodson House Movie and Construction. We're going to the top of the second inning. Score tied 0-0. Panthers will bring to the plate Mayan, Blair, and Newton. Justin Mayan, Mayan will step in. He'll be the designated hitter. Again, he's, pit, he's batting for Magallanes. And Alex Rico still be on the mound for the Dragons. So Mayan steps in. First pitch to Mayan is on the way. Swung right on, straight up in the air. It's in foul territory for the first base line, giving chase to the first baseman. And he makes oh. an easy grab for the fly out in foul territory. You know, Rico's, first out. Rico's throwing that ball right down the pipe, uh, but it seems to be dropping off just a little bit. It's not 
not a lot of velocity yeah, behind it. But he's, I think that's what's hurting yeah. us. Yeah, is it, it looks like a basketball coming down the yeah. pipe there, and yeah, they're being overly aggressive. Yeah. So the next batter, J.D. Blair, the catcher, will step to the plate. Rico coming set in the pitch, swung on again on the first pitch, flight out towards left field. Nice left hit. Let's see if he can handle chase it. To it and yeah. Not a problem for the yeah. left fielder. So fly out to left field for out number two. <coughs> two pitches, two <coughs> outs. Yeah. It's not what you want to see on your opposing pitcher. You want to get a, have him throw a lot of pitches if possible. Yeah. Again, that ball just floating right down the middle of the pipe. And now <laughs> stepping to the plate will be number fourteen, the shortstop Michael Newton. Newton had an excellent outing last game. Yeah. At the plate and on the mound. Yep. Got Little the win. Walk off, didn't got he? the win as yeah. a pitcher and a walk off base hit to win the game yeah. at the bottom of the seventh against Sal Sand. First pitch on the way to Newton. It's right. going to be a strike on the outside corner. And that's one thing about Rico. He's definitely uh, he's hitting his corners, hitting his spots. Um, I've only seen maybe one breaking ball so far. I've only seen one, yeah. He yeah. Hadn't thrown many. He hadn't needed to. Yep. Hadn't got down on the count. We're being too aggressive and swing at the first pitch. Next pitch on the way. Some curveball. There's a breaking There's that ball. Ball swung on. It's going to be if a they can handle it. shallow right field, second base, and it moves back. There it is. Catching three up, three down. Nothing so special. Four pitches <coughs> and yep. three fly outs. And again, and that's uh, going to do it for the second inning for wow. the Panthers. Nothing special. Just rolling them straight down the pipe. So we'll take a quick break. Panther base will return after these messages. Are you ready for a vacation? Tanya with Travel by Design can help you with all your vacation destination needs. At no cost to you, she can plan all of the details tailored to your unique wants and needs. So all you have to do is enjoy your vacation. Tanya is a certified expert with Disney Universal Orlando and California, Sandals, and all cruise lines. Give Tanya a call at 830-931-4834 or visit her Facebook page, Tanya with Travel by Design, for all the latest specials and must-do vacations. There's power in the simplest of actions. Like one neighbor helping another. Where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything at Medina Electric Cooperative, and we're grateful for your trust. To provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Medina Electric Cooperative is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your source for power and information. Welcome back to Dodson House Moving Construction, North Park Chevrolet broadcast of Panther Baseball. Got a quick game going so far. Not many batters up to the plate for either team. Panthers so far, two innings that they've batted. It's been three up, three down. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. Dragons will bring to the plate. Castilleja, <coughs> Zamora, and Peña. The second Mason right fielder and their designated hitter will come to the plate. Castilleja will step in, right-handed batter. One of you know, we've got a seven o'clock game today. Um, visiting, when we go away, the games typically are gonna be starting at seven. All home games will be at 7.30. First pitch from Magallanes on the way. It's gonna be low for ball one. Magallanes from the wind up. Next pitch on the way. It's gonna be inside for ball two. Kind of a slow start here for the Panthers. That's how it happened on Tuesday also. They actually fell behind, had to come from behind yeah. to win that game in the bottom of the seventh on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Next pitch, the Castilleja <coughs> is gonna be down low for ball three. So it's gonna be three and oh. Yeah, the umpire's not giving any of those low balls in there. He's gonna kind of pick it up just a little bit. Nothing below the knee. Magianis with the pitch. There it is. There. Ooh, he walked him oh. on four pitches. Wow. Yes. I'm trying to, um, we're trying to figure out the strike zone right now, and I'm sure so is Blair. 
to Casiejo who will take the base on balls and bring to the plate the right field number 30, Joaquin Zamora. Zamora, right-handed batter, getting his signals from his coach, looking at his card on his sleeve there. So the Dragons with the runner on first, and nobody out. Let's see if Zamora scores around, try to move the runner over with nobody out. First pitch on the way, it's going to be a ball. Got to hesitate a little bit because you don't know what he's going to call. Oh, my goodness. Not well, a bad-looking pitch. Well, that was definitely not a low ball. That, that was more in the mid area, but uh, he didn't like that one either. So we'll see uh, where his strike zone lands here pretty minute. So the 1-0 pitch to Zamora is on the way. It's going to stay high for ball two. Aggressive lead over on and first. And that's going to bring Coach Herb out of the box. I mean, out of the, the dugout there. Probably a good timeout. Settle his pitcher down. You, you, you want to try to get as many innings as you can from your starting pitcher. So he's going to walk out to the mound and talk to him, try to settle him down. He's, and, I, and I, you know, I talked about it last game. Jared was with us, and 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 I, we were saying that he's got to get his players focused. I mean, it took a half a game for last game for these yeah. players to get focused. He needs to do the same thing and get them back into this game. Yeah. A little bit of a slow start here. It's all got to start with pitching right here. He's got to throw strikes and get them to swing the bat so he can play some defense. Coach Herb making his way back to the dugout. So 2-0 count for Zamora. Magianis from the stretch. Base runner taking a decent lead over at first base. There it Next is. Pitch on the way okay. is right down the middle. Yep. Way to get it started. About waist high is what he wants. Waist high, a little bit inside. That's where uh, he's got a couple strikes right there. So he needs to keep it right there. Count goes to 2-1 and one on Zamora. Next pitch away is a ground ball to second Let's base. Second it. base flips over, takes it himself, takes it. throws it over to first base to oh, get he got the double it. play. Yes, sir. Outstanding play. There you go. They turn that one. Nice job by Davis, taking it himself and then turning the get the uh, run, uh, get the out at first. He had the opportunity to flip that ball yeah, to the he shortstop, did. but he, he took chose it. not to and not yep. risk the throw. So he took it himself, stepped on second, threw it at first for a huge double play. So now the Panthers have two outs, and it'll bring to the plate the designated hitter number 24, Matthew Pena. You know that last pitch that he hit was awfully low. If the, if the runner lets, I mean, if the batter lets that go, that's a, he's been calling that ball all night long. Again, for the first pitch of Pena, it's in the dirt for ball one. See if we can get the third out here. So the 1 0 pitch is there right at is. the knees. And he got finally got pitch. the call at there the knees, is. leaving yep. the count at 1 and 1. Beautiful straight fastball. <laughs> 1 1 pitch on the way. Swung oh, on and missed. Is. Beautiful. Magianis throwing some strikes now. Looks like that uh, mound visit might have paid off. Yeah, absolutely. Calmed him down a little bit. He's throwing really, really. That'll bring the count to one and Good. two. Pitch on the way. Curveball. Breaking ball. It's oh, going to be a base hit third. over the third baseman. That was a pretty good strike on the ball. Yeah, he scored that ball up and lined it right over the third base and for the base hit. So Pena will reach first on the base hit, and that'll bring the plate to the first baseman, number 17, Joe Guzman. Look at that breaking ball kind of hung up just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, he tried throwing a breaking ball, hung up a little bit, and allowed him to turn on it. So with two outs, Guzman will step in, another right-handed batter for the Dragons, and Pena will take a lead off first base. Magianis from the stretch. First pitch on the way. It's going to be outside for ball one. Uh oh, there's a call out there. Looks like they called. Looks like they called a walk. Called a balk. Maybe he didn't come set. He didn't come set. The umpire's yeah. putting his hand to his other hand as if showing him that he didn't come set with his glove hand and his throwing hand. So it allows the runner to move over to second base. The 
one-0 Pitts Guzman. There's the pitch. Right down the middle. Yep. That's how he's going to get the call. He's going to have to get him close to the center there. They're just not calling any of his uh, corner pitches now for some reason. That's, it, the count's 1-1, one, one, right? Yep. The umpire just said it was 0-1. Uh, I think uh, I think the buck. He, he got confused maybe with Next that buck. We'll see what it is. There's another strike on the outside corner. Nice, saying it's 0-2. I know he threw a ball on the first pitch. All right, well, we'll take it. We'll take two strikes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the scoreboard reflects that now, too, so uh, they both agree. We'll go with an 0-2 count. Two outs, runner at second. Pitch on the way. Oh, that's Pissing a pitch. outside yes. corner for strike three. Guzman watches strike three go back. Good placement by Magallanes. Very to get nice the out. on the outside corner. So we'll go two complete. Our score, Benita Valley 0, Southwest 0. Panther baseball will return after these messages. Bush's Chicken, one of the oldest locations in Castroville, is proud to serve the Medina Valley area. Bush's Chicken has one goal, be the best. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. Stop by Bush's Chicken on Tuesday and get the Tinder Tuesday deal or try their buffalo fries and ask about their Panther special. It's always a hit. Bush's Chicken, 935 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call them at 830-538-2800. Bush's Chicken, one of the oldest locations in Castroville, is proud to serve the Medina Valley area. Bush's Chicken has one goal, be the best. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. Stop by Bush's Chicken on Tuesday and get the Tinder Tuesday deal or try their buffalo fries and ask about their Panther special. It's always a hit. Bush's Chicken, 935 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call them at 830-538-2800. Welcome back to Panther Baseball. We are going to the top of the third inning. Panthers will send to the plate the first baseman, number five, Ryan Marty. So this inning will be Marty, Krieger, and Rips. Marty steps to the plate, right-handed batter. Let's see what Rico gives him here on the first pitch. Rico still on the mound for the Dragons. First pitch on the way. It's going to be high for ball one. Panthers have need to get do need to get some base runners. Haven't had a base runner on yet. Well, no, the, uh, Davis got on yeah, the error the very first at yeah. bat, but he got doubled up on the double play there. Next pitch on the way, swung on and missed. And again, uh, Rico's just throwing the ball right down the pipe. Uh, not a lot of movement on his ball. Not a, I mean, very few curveballs at this point. Yep. Um, maybe the speed is throwing. Throwing the boys off just a little bit, but Marty with the one, one Marty with the one one count. Oh, there's curve a curveball. There's, there's a curveball curve that ball. dropped. It dropped yep. two eight. Good looking pitch, but <coughs> dropped down. But Marty didn't bite strike. on it, so it'll bring the count to two balls and one strike. Rico pitching from the stretch with nobody on. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. That'll even the count at two and two. Swung right through that ball. Way ahead of it is what he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Again, I think it's the uh, velocity that's throwing him off just a bit. Just kind of stay back and wait a little bit and then drive it. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Curveball. There it on. is, just it's like that. Be a base hit. Just like hit that. Hit out to left field. So Ryan Marty <laughs> finally sits back and waits on that yep. ball. Yeah, that drives was the ball out to left field for the base hit. Little breaking ball, very little breaking ball. Sat and back he, on that breaking yeah, pitch. Yeah, waited and... Just a beautiful shot. I think the right second the time around, Johnny, it's going to be a lot better yeah. once they yeah. see it one time. Yeah. So with the Panthers have Marty on first base, and that will bring to the plate the left fielder, Jaden Krieger. Krieger steps in, right-handed batter. 
Marty with a decent lead over at first base. Rico checks on the runner. Kicks and throws home. Outside for ball one. And Rico's been getting a lot of work for the Dragons, so we anticipate he'll stay out there as long as possible, I'm, I'm thinking. but Yeah, I mean, they'll try to ride him <coughs> as long as possible because his pitches are minimal right now. Krieger, one of those batters not using batting gloves. We don't see that hardly anymore. Mm -hmm. Pitch on the way to Krieger. Swung on foul straight back for a strike. Even the count at one and one. Krieger steps back in with a 1-1 one, one count. Rico checking the runner over at first base. Marty with a decent lead. Pitch on the way. It's curveball. Swung on. Popped up What's in the up? air towards oh, the, the first, first baseman base didn't side. See it. Didn't see it. Oh, he got it. Last second and brought it down. So the fly out to first base. A little late reaction there from the first baseman. To get to the first out, Marty holds at first base. Again, the sun right in their eyes, and the, you can see the first baseman making that comment it, that the sun is right in his eyes. So, made a good play on it. So, five flyouts for the Panthers so far. So, that'll bring Gavin Rips to the plate, the center fielder. He'll step to the plate with only one out and a runner at first. Rico pitching from the stretch, checking his runner up first. First pitch on the way to Rips. Curveball. Oh, broke right in the broke center. Broke right in there for a strike. The 0-1 count to Rips. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Oh, Ground there you go. Makes good stop. contact. Fielded by the shortstop. Thrown over to second. Oh, second hustle. Thrown over oh, to first yeah. Base to, oh, no. He's called safe. Yeah. So they do get the lead out. And Rips again. Rips reach base on a fielder's choice. They'll get the lead out. They get Smarty out at second base for yeah, the second Rip, out of the inning. Rips just flat out, out outran that ball. He, he's a very, very fast individual. Him and his brother both super quick. Paid off right there. Panthers will turn the roster over and go back to the top of the order. Coming to the plate now will be Dusty Davis, the second baseman. Davis reached on an <coughs> error. It was a borderline error hit with a short start running up. He knew he had to force to throw it first, but he bobbled the ball. So Davis with two outs at the plate. Let's see Rips how aggressive it. Rips, Rips is going to be. There he goes. Rips is running, but it's fouled off. Davis swings at the first pitch and fouls it straight back. And Rips will make his way back to first base on the steal attempt, after the steal attempt. Yeah, I figured Rips is gonna be pretty aggressive on the bags. Rips he, looking at Coach Herb for the signal to see if he's gonna run again here. Looks Very like an aggressive. aggressive lead yeah. over first base. The 0-1 pitch to Davis. Catcher's lined up on the outside, let's see what he does. Yep. The throw over to first base and Davis back in plenty of time. <coughs> I'm sorry, that's Rips. Rips back in plenty of time. Davis steps back in. Still with the 0-1 count. Rico checking the run over at first. Catcher. He steps off. Yeah. Gets Rips go back. He's really worried about wow. Rips running again. And again, Rips well, he should doing be his about job. Him yeah. Out. Rips <laughs> always does his job on the base. He's I mean, to, he's trying to force a throw over to first base. Maybe he can throw it away. He, the catcher's thinking about him and the Davis pitcher. Davis squares around, bounce, bunts it foul, though. There's two outs. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm assuming that was a mm -hmm. bunt for hit attempt. Yeah. <laughs> He yep. scored around a little bit early, I would say, <coughs> if it was. Yep, let's see what he does now. So that'll bring the count to 0-2 on Davis. Rips with another big lead over at first base. Rico checking, oh checking goodness. again. Catcher's Two. lined up in the uh, opposite yeah. box. I'm anticipating a way outside pitch. Yeah. <laughs> with the, especially with there the he goes. Down. Throw down to second base as Rips attempting to steal. Oh, my goodness. He, he got under safe, it. Got under the tag. Oh, it was a good throw just to – could not put the tag down. The throw was a little bit towards the first base side of oh. the base and allowed Rips to get behind him and slide underneath the yeah. tag. He slid right so under Rips that. So Rips with a stolen base, and it'll bring the count to oh, um, 
I guess it's one. Yeah, one and two. It's hard to read that scoreboard. Yeah, it is. Now Davis needs, needs a little pop right over shortstop and bring this run in. One-two pitch on the way. Swing there it is. Davis oh. It'll pop fly. Second baseman Maybe running back. Maybe it's going to drop. Oh, they got nope, it. Nope, it does not All drop. Right. Second baseman comes down with it for <laughs> out number three. So a fly out to second base will close the top half of the second inning for the Panthers. And Panthers will leave a runner on. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back for the bottom of the third inning. Texas, 268,000 square miles and then some. Twice as much elbow room as California. There's just no place like Texas. You can take that to the bank. Texan Bank, poised and ready for a future that's wide open. Member FDIC. Big State Electric is raising the bar in the San Antonio electrical industry. Working with local and forward-thinking companies, we are changing the downtown skyline with beautiful and innovative buildings. As well as working with local universities, we are revolutionizing academic sports with cutting-edge and high-tech electrical solutions. Join us as we light up the future one project at a time. Big State Electric, competence and quality since 1966. Supporting San Antonio, Austin, Houston, and the Gulf Coast region. Welcome back to Panther Baseball. We go to the bottom of the third. Alex Rico, the pitcher. Up Pitcher's the in the box. Magallanes with the first pitch to Rico is going to be low for ball one. Rico can hit the ball. I've seen him hit the ball numerous times. Let's see what he does today. Against the big right-hander. Again, we're in the bottom of the third. Dragon's not yet through their lineup yet. Oh, that's next, that inside. Next oh. pitch on the way. Does not get the call on no, the inside corner. And he'll bring the count to 2-0. and oh. <clears throat> Sun now beginning to set some long shadows on the field. Getting to that part where the ball is going to be hard to see. Pitch on the way. Oh, boy, goodness. Yeah. That was a good that pitch. Was wow. Yeah. So I'll, that's he called it a strike, I believe. Yeah, he did. So it's a two. Yep, two, two balls. Count. It's hard to read this umpire. Yeah. So Rico with a 2-1 pitch. Magianis with a pitch on the way. Oh, Swung that's a beautiful that pitch. Even the count at two and two. All right, let's see what he does. See if this, get his breaking ball to fall right here. Maybe hit the outside corner. Rico's gotta be aggressive. Two, two pitch on the way. Oh, he went around. He went around. Yeah, the check That's swing, it. they went around. So yep. Rico will get the strikeout, or Magianis will get the strikeout on Rico. And that's two strikeouts in a row. We go to la the last inning for Magallanes, and that'll bring to the plate the center fielder number two. <laughs> I'm sorry, that'll bring him back to the top of the order. The left fielder's who they're getting dh for. First pitch on the way. Oh, He's nice pitch. The strike one yep. on the inside corner. So Jojo Gonzalez steps to the plate. The center fielder walked last time up the bat. The 0 one pitch on the way. Oh, Could there it is. Curve ball from Aguianis. Wow, that was a beautiful pitch. Does not get the call. No. Leaving the count at one and one. One one pitch on the way. Swung on the big ground ball over to shorts. The shorts out coming Here in hard. Newton throws on the run. Beautiful, beautiful play. Beautiful by play Michael by Newton. Newton. Wow, charged that ball very nicely. Made a beautiful throw to first, and Marty handles it well. Marty had a great game against Eagle Pass. Uh, he made some terrific plays and looks like he's feeling very comfortable over there at first base. The Dragons will start their left-handed back-to-backers here with yep. the Standing shortstop right on number the line. 11, Julius Castillo, who sacrificed last time up to bat. There's two outs. First pitch on the way is going to be ball one high. The, left. the bottom of the third with two outs. 
First ball to Castillo is going to be high for ball one. He is standing right on the line. Sure is. He's not giving my, my guy this is much room there. 1-0 pitch is going to be called down low for ball two. The 2-0 pitch to Castillo, the left-handed batter, is taken down mm. low for ball three. So three, three balls in a row. Three quick pitches. <clears throat> you know that lefty pushing that line like that, it's, you just got to throw to the mitt. Just throw to the mitt and he'll be all right. Magallanes with the 3-0 pitch. Kicks and throws. It'll be high for ball four for four straight pitches, and Castillo will draw the walk over to first base to so the – Dragons will have the first base runner of the of the inning with two outs, and it will bring to the plate the other Castillo, number 22, the third baseman, Romeo Castillo. Castillo grounded out to the second baseman last time up to bat. So he'll step to the plate with a runner at first and two outs. Magallanes will now pitch from the stretch, checks his runner over at first base. First pitch on the way. Down low for ball one, so five straight balls thrown by Magallanes. Just got to find his groove, and he'll be all right. Pitch on the way. There it that is. It is right down the middle yep. for strike one. They'll even count at one and one <laughs> to the third baseman, Castillo. One pitch on the way. Swung a high pitch going down the oh, second. Oh, Blair makes a throw. Steal. Oh, Beautiful what a throw. play by J.D. Blair. Wow. Throws a strike down the second base. My to goodness. Get Castillo thrown out he threw on him. the attempt at steal. He was probably, uh, it seemed like a second before the runner even got there. So the third baseman, Romeo throw. Castillo, will come back to the plate, clear his. Um, Beautiful throw by Blair. He'll, at the next inning, he'll come back to the plate since he didn't get to finish it out bat. And what we'll do is we'll go to the top of the fourth here. We'll take a quick break and come back. Panther Base will return after these messages. Like you, we love calling this home. Cash Groveville State Bank has been serving the Medina Valley area for over 63 years by providing the best financial products, modern technology, and customer service. Not only are we the local bank you can rely on for all your financial needs, but we are also your neighbors giving back to the community we grew up in and love. Come home to Casgroveville State Bank. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. Welcome back to Panther Baseball here at Dragons Field over at Southwest High School. We are going to the top of the fourth inning. We are still squared away at 0-0 wow. zero, zero tie. Panthers will come up to bat. They will bring to the plate. Mr. Stevens. The third baseman, Wesley Stevens. Right fielder, Manny Ramirez, and a designated hitter, Justin Mann. Stevens will step to the plate. Grounded out the shortstop last time up to bat. We got some big hitters in, the, in this uh, role here, so hopefully Stevens and Ramirez can get us rolling here. Pitch to Stevens is going to be taken low for ball one. Stevens with a good night against South Sand. Going three for four. 
Stevens. One-0 pitch to Square Stevens it. on the way. Oh, there Swung you go. On. Nice. Fly ball to Hard center, hit. center field. Get over. Giving chase back. Oh, Able to make the play. play on the run. So Stevens squares up the ball, continues hitting the ball hard, but just hit it right to the, the center fielder as he was running back. Yeah, so center fielder made a center field. good play on that ball. And it'll bring to the plate number 11, <laughs> Randy Ramirez. Manny Ramirez flied out to center field last time up the bat. And Ramirez yeah. with a good, beautiful night against South Sand. He went three for two for two with and two walks. So got on base every time he got up the bat. So he's been swinging a hot bat. Pitch on the way is a curveball. Oh, nice in little curveball. Wow, drop right in there. We're hitting the ball. We're just hitting right to the. Uh, well, second time in the around the order. They're yeah. finally starting to make, match the timing of the pitcher. Just need to find the gaps out there because they're hitting it hard. We need to turn the lights on. It's starting to get dark here real quick. The old one pitch on the way to Ramirez. Swung oh, on ground ball to go. shortstop. Shortstop mm. feels it. One step over to first base to get the out in time. So Ramirez ground, grounds out to the shortstop for out number two. And that'll bring to the plate the designated hitter number 18, Justin Mayan. Mayan again batting for the pitcher, Noel Magallanes. Now batting. Mayan, big, tall, right-handed batter. Try to start things off with two outs here. First pitch on the way, curveball. Curveball. Curveball dropped in there last time for strike one. This time mm -hmm. it falls in for a ball. Try to follow it up with another first pitch curveball. Didn't work this time. Mayan flied out to first base last time up the bat. Rico still on the mound. Pitching from the set, big kick and throw. Mm. Just a little bit outside. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, Rico's got that big kick, doesn't he? He's got a big old kick when he, pitch, when he throws. So Mayan sitting with a 2-0 count. Rico with the pitch. Swung on, foul straight back <coughs> for the strike. Took a rip at that. Yeah. That threw like a basketball coming there at chest level. Oh my goodness. And there yeah. goes the lights are coming on now. Took yep. them a while to figure it out. Well, half of them came on. Yep. All right, two balls, one strike. Let's see what Rico goes with now. So Mayan with the 2 1 pit count here. Time is called. Rico, uh, Mayan calls time. I think it's because those lights popped on and uh, give, yeah. giving him the reset. Kind of threw him off a little bit. Smart move. So we'll step back in with a 2-1 count with two outs here in the top of the fourth. Catcher are setting up way outside. Yeah, right on that line. Pitch on the way. Curveball stays outside. That will bring the count to 3-1 and one for Mayan. And steps back in, 3-1 count. Rico with the high leg kick and the throw outside for ball four. So Mayan wow. reaches first base on the base on balls. Panthers At least have he's finally consistent. got a runner on. He's definitely consistent. He's not giving anybody that outside pitch right now. And that ball was right between the line and the plate, right on that line. So Mayan reaches first. So the Panthers have a runner on face first base. However, there are two outs. But the catcher will come up to bat, number nine, J.D. Blair. Blair flied out to left field last time up the bat. He can hit the ball, I can tell you that. He can really hit the ball. He had some really good hits the other night against uh, Eagle Pass. J.D. Blair did have a base hit against South Sand on Tuesday. First pitch to him, it's gonna oh. be a curveball. That's gonna be down low for ball one. So Rico not hitting his curveball spots. Blair stepped back in with a 1-0 count. Mine at first. With a good lead over at first yeah, base. I don't know aggressive. how much speed he has, but he's got a good lead. Catcher setting up. One goes, oh, he throws back over to first. Mayan slides, slides back in with no problem. 
I just think they're trying to get Rico's attention over there on first. I'm not sure he's going to steal him, but he may because he's got a pretty aggressive lead over there. Big Back lead. to 1-0 count here for Blair. Pitch on the way. It's going to be outside for ball two. That will bring the count to 2-0. So Blair will step back in with the hitter's count at 2-0 with two outs. Catcher's going to call time and go talk to his pitcher, kind of settle him down a little bit because he has been a little bit wild as of late. Yeah. So when he misses, he's been missing big. <laughs> that aggressive lead over at first uh, from Rips, and now uh, that's really kind of setting him uh, making him uncomfortable, and that's the idea, you know. If your pitcher doesn't at least look at you at first, you may not be doing your job over there. Yeah, we did that a lot the other night, really messed with the pitcher. It helped. He actually yeah. threw a couple in the outfield because yeah. of it. Yeah. So Blair stepped back in. The meeting at the mound is over. Blair sitting with a 2-0 count with a runner at first with two outs. Next pitch on the way. It's going to be high for ball Stays three. high. Thought it was going to drop down. Good but job by Blair to lay off that pitch. Blair sitting there with a 3-0 pitch here with two outs running first. That pitch is on the way. It's oh going to stay. Oh, we called it a strike. Yeah, that one just it was at the letter. Top of the, top of the zone. He likes that high one there right at the top. Of, uh, you know, pretty much where the letters are there. 3-1 pitch is on the way, and it's going to be oh, out. That oh, we called it a strike yeah. on the outside. Now he gives him that pitch. And that pitch, uh, The catcher framed that very well, brought it back in. So that's going to fill the count up. So we have a full count now with two outs and a runner on first. Blair two. steps back, back in. Rico, Rico going to be sitting here with a full count, checking the runner over at first base, and Blair calls time. Blair not happy with those last two. Yeah, that was... That one was way off. Yeah, both of them were. I know if it's borderline, you can get the call, but that one was in the left-hander's batter's box. So the payoff pitch with two outs. No. Now that one's outside for ball four. Mayan was running on that, which he should have been. Good at bat. So two walks in a row. Well, it looks like they're going to come out and talk to Rico, settle him down. We'll have a uh, pitch runner for the Path Panthers, so Blair will come to the dugout, and the pitch runner for the Panthers is going to be number 13. That's Gavidel. That's Noah Gavidel. That's Gavidel. Gavidel is going to be come is going to run for the catcher. He'll go to first base. Mayan will be standing on second base. Southwest coach on the mound <coughs> talking to his pitcher, try to settle him down. Kind of what Coach Herb did earlier, just kind of settle him down, yeah. get him refocused. Quite a few balls for the last two batters as since he's here in the top of the fourth. Fourth. I don't have we don't have his pitch count, but he started out with probably ten pitches in the first inning and yeah. two innings, you know. Uh, and lately he's been throwing just a little bit more per inning, so maybe he's he doesn't appear to be tired. Uh, I think the base running is really throwing him off a little bit. Those aggressive leads at first. So they break up the meeting on the mound, and that'll bring the shortstop number 14, Michael Newton, to the plate. Newton flied out to second base last night with the, up the bat. He'll have two runners on with two outs here in the top of the fourth. See if we can hit the gap. Checks your runner over at second. First pitch on the way is going to be outside for ball one. So another ball thrown by Rico. Again, Newton had a three for four night oh on yeah. Tuesday. Walk Outstanding off. night with a walk off. Winning hit. Pitch on the way. Swung and a miss to even the count at one and one. Kind of on the high side, but yep. it probably, high looked and like a, probably looked like a good pitch to hit, but it swung right through it. So the one one count to Newton. Two runners on. Pitch on the way. Swung. It's going to be a tapper down the third base line. See if third they can make the play. Third baseman coming hard. He's not going to have oh, a play at first. he did not make the play. Did not even throw. There was no way he was going to make that play. It was actually That's a smart a hit. play yeah. by the third baseman to hold up. It's going to be an infield hit for Newton. Yes. Who continues his hitting streak. Got the job done. So with two outs, the Panthers have bases loaded, and they'll bring to the plate the first baseman, Ryan Marty. 
Marty with the base hit last time up the bait, up the bat. Lined one out to the left field. He'll step up with bases loaded here. If he connects with the ball, he can really hit the ball. So a huge opportunity here with the Panthers, but however, they do have two outs. 0-0 zero, zero score here. Pitch on the way. Mm. On the outside corner for strike one. Wow, yeah, that was a little and floater in there. I do apologize. We typically have a scoreboard up, but I forgot to put the scoreboard up. So we'll try to keep you up to date with well, the It's easy to keep score right score. now. Yeah, this, uh, not much has happened here. Zero zeros. It'll be Johnny's job here to keep yep. us up to date. I can keep track when it's zero, so I'm good at that. It's on the way to Marty. Oh, Another strike on the outside corner. Marty wishes he had that <laughs> one back. He slammed his yep. bat down on the on the carpet there because he yeah. knew he should have swung at that. So he's going to yeah. be sitting with an 0-2 count. And, I mean, you would expect he's not going to see one right down the middle. But if he uh, does, he needs to take advantage yeah, of it. I think the breaking balls, here here they come. Yeah. It's an 0-2 count with bases loaded. Rico steps off the mound. Catcher's going to call time and go talk to him. And, you know, Rico's kind of gone back to his uh, how he started the game, just throwing fastballs, trying to hit spots. And that's where he's had his, his success, the, you know, his curveball. Once in a while, hit hit the spot, but well, he's having more success with, with a straight fastball. Count, with an 0-2 count, he's he's going to throw it. Yeah, yeah. So here we're at the top of the fourth. Base is loaded, two outs. Marty at the plate sitting with an 0-2 count. See if Panthers can scratch off a run here or yeah. two. A base hit would score two runs. Oh, Catch him setting up. up way outside. Yeah. Expect that curveball to break across. Pitch on the way. Swung oh, on, there you ground go. ball to shortstop. Shortstop feels it on the run. Throwing over the first base, one hopper to first base. Marty's going to be safe. It's oh going to be an infield boy. hit for yep. Ryan Marty. And the run will score for the Panthers. Wow, way to hustle. Marty really hustled down the line. You know, the, it was just one of those balls that shortstop just couldn't get there quick enough and make a throw. It was, it was, it was one of those not hard like enough. Like a dinky, the, the yeah. Shortstop was playing deep which yep. he should have been, yep. and it was just a, a slow roller to him. By the time he fielded it, yep. Marty with his outstanding speed beat it out at first yeah, base. He really did. He's <laughs> flying over there. That will bring the plate Krieger. Krieger sitting now with the same thing. Bases loaded, two outs swung on first right, pitch. First pitch is flied out towards center field. Center fielder calling everyone off and will make the play. So they scratched out one out there. Field, but the, however, the Panthers do score a run, but they do leave bases loaded. So we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Our score has changed now. Panthers have scored a run. So Medina Valley one, Southwest zero. We'll come back for the bottom of the fourth after these messages. Call State Farm agent Hazel Russell in Castroville at 830-931-3441. Security State Bank, your financial partner since 1925 with one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. Check out Security State Bank's competitive rates and services from local people you know and trust. Serving South Texas with seven convenient locations, including 1726 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call 830-538-9898 or online at securitystbk.com. Equal housing lender, member. FDIC. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Castillo with the plate, the third base from Romeo Castillo. Grounded out the second base last time up the bat. First pitch is going to be ball. Strike one, I'm sorry. So the 0 1 count to Castillo. Next pitch in the way is going to be high and outside. Magallanos back on the mound again for the Panthers. Again, we're in the bottom of the fourth. The Panthers scored a run last inning, so up 1 to 0. Castillo at the plate, and that's mm. going to be taken for Good pitch. ball two. Castillo left handed batter with an even count at one and one. 
Magallanes pitching from the stretch now. <laughs> oh, there you Swung go. on. It's going to be a fly oh, ball to left field. Foul. It's going to be foul. Deep fly ball that goes foul. And that'll bring the count to two and two. Tracked ball. Uh, the left fielder tracked that ball very, very well. Really had a shot at catching that ball. Just a little bit too far to the left there. So Castillo making his way back to the plate. Magianis with the pitch, swung on. A little tapper foul, goes straight back. So 2-2 two -two count again on Castillo. Magallanes from the stretch. Fouled another pitch off. That lefty wants to take it to the opposite field. He, he's almost doing like a slap. Yeah. He, he's, he's halfway down the line on his swing. I mean, he's trying to hit it down to the, the ground ball to the third base side. He trying to choked beat it up out. on that bat, too. You know, Magallanes is throwing from the stretch. He typically throws from the windup with nobody on. Look at that. Does it again and fouls it off to the left side. That's three straight foul balls on the slap hitting towards yeah. the left side. A softball player out there, huh? He's slapping it over there. Maybe to it works. He must have field. decent speed. Well, the count stays at two and two. Magianis with the pitch, curveball, swung oh, on. This that one's a hit. Up. Let's see Got if a fly ball to center oh, field. Rips, rips moving back. Not a problem for Rips. Oh, and he rips goes the cap, great the job. So fly out to center field for Castillo. Yeah, he hit every foul ball to left field area and then drives that one right up the middle. And that'll bring to the plate the catcher number three, Miguel <coughs> Arias, who grounded out to third base last time up to bat. The Dragons have one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Magallanes from the stretch, nobody on base. Fastball right, right down, down, the, down the pipe. Yeah, beautiful pitch. With a little velocity too, good looking pitch there by Magallanes. Curveball swung on, ground ball to see. second base, fielded by Davis. Davis thrown over to first base. He gets nice the easy job. Out. Yeah, Davis handles it well. Made it look easy. And that'll bring to the plate the second baseman, number 16, Brandon Castilleja. Castilleja walked last time up to bat. So now with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to Castilleja, curveball, ball one. Pitch on the way from Magallanes. It's going to be low in the dirt or in the carpet, I in guess you could carpet, say. carpet, yeah, no dust flying. And that'll bring the count to 2 and 0. Oh. <laughs> 2 0 oh count with two outs. Pitch on the way. At the knees Good for a strike. Pitch. Yeah, very nice pitch. Count now, two balls, one strikes with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Castilleja awaiting the 2 1 pitch, but he calls time and steps out of the box. Steps back in. Magallanes from the stretch again. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Oh, that was a good looking pitch. Lined over towards the Dragon dugout. Swinging way a little late on that. A lot of velocity. It seems like it's getting uh, more and more as he goes on. So that'll even count at two and two. So we've got deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Fouled it off to the right side again over the dugout this time. Magallanes throwing a lot of strikes here to this batter. <laughs> I saw that break all the way through. 
Magianis getting his signs from his catcher. Pitching on the stretch, nobody on. It's a curveball. Oh, Just outside. Ball. That should fill the count. Should be 3 2. Yeah, yeah, full count. So, full count, three balls, two strikes, nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth with a 1 0 Panther lead. Payoff pitch on the way. Oh. Walked him. Just outside. Just outside. So Castilleja will draw the walk. He has two walks so far tonight, back to back. And that'll bring to the plate the right field number 30, Joaquin Zamora. Zamora will step up to the plate. Last time he hit into a double play. He'll step up to the plate with a runner on and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Castilleja with a decent lead over at first. Magianis checks on him and throws home. Fastball. Called a block. Second one. Did he not come set? On him. He didn't give him an explanation. May not have come set again. Second time Last time tonight. Mokar came and talked to him and told him that he didn't come set. No. So the runner at second. Pitch on the way. That's that a good a pitch. Yeah. So that should even the count at one and one with the walk pitch. It was, I believe it was outside. Yeah. So one one count with a runner at second. Two outs, bottom of the fourth, pitch on the way. Swung on, flied straight back and to go out of play. Four strike two. So Drag is now with a runner in scoring position, hoping to tie this thing up. Magallanes with a one-two count. And he throws home. Swung on, swung oh, right through for yes. strike three. So Zamota strikes out to end the inning and they leave a runner on base. So that'll do it for the fourth inning. We'll take a quick break and come back for the fifth inning. Panther Base will return after these messages. Rusty Rooster at 806 Highway 90 West in Castroville is the place to stop on your way home from work or to drop by on the weekend to grab some beverages without ever leaving your truck. Rusty Rooster, the place in Castroville for quenching your thirst from sun up to sundown. Drive through today, fast, convenient. That's Rusty Rooster, 806 Highway 90 West in Castroville. After all, anything goes till the rooster crows. With Broadway Bank, your everyday banking is fast, easy, and digital. And now you can bank local and earn $300 when you open a new free checking account online with qualifying activities. Enjoy the convenience of a Texas-based bank with lots of local financial centers and an award-winning online and mobile banking experience that lets you bank when you want. Learn more about this limited-time offer at broadway.bank slash 300. Minimum opening deposit is $25. Offer subject to change without notice. Terms and conditions apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Panther Baseball. Welcome back to the Doubts in the House moving North Park Chevrolet broadcast of Panther Baseball. We are going to the top of the fifth inning. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning. Panthers are going to bring to the plate Gavin Ripps, Dusty Davis, and Wesley Stevens this inning. Panthers up 1-0 to zero here again in the top of the fifth. Tight game. Had a good game going so far. Dragons are prepared. I think Dragons ha have been playing some really, really good baseballs of late. I heard one of the, uh, the the parents talking about how good they've been playing. Yes, yeah. so we knew we had a tough test. So third close game in a row for the Panthers so far. It's been a good game. Rico back on the mound. First pitch to Rips is on the way. And that's going to be the outside corner for strike one. Called that one. Yeah, he did call that one. He's getting a little bit more consistent now as the game goes on. The umpire is. Yeah. 
which is all you can ask. So the 0 1 pitch, two rips, is on the way. Swung on. Oh, there it's going to be a line shot to left field, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. So the Panthers get the leadoff runner, and that's going to be a nice hit for Gavin Rips here. That's a second one, right? He's hit the ball two times tonight. He had a fielder's choice last time up the bat. bat didn't, he couldn't quite. He got on base. Outran it. Yeah. Well, he's finding he the ball. Up, he broke up a double play. Yeah, he's finding the ball. So Pan Panthers get the leadoff batter on is what they wanted to do, and they're going to turn the order over, get back to the top of the order. And let's see brothers here. We got Brody in the box and Gavin on first. So Brody Rips. Brody in. Rips is going to bat for Dusty Davis in the top of the order here. With a runner on first and nobody out. First pitch to number 12 is not going to happen. He steps off and gets the runner back over to first. Again, with, doing with his job at yeah, first. With Gavin on first base, yep. he's a threat to steal. And they know that, so they're going to try to keep him close because he has a huge lead over at first base. So Rips at first and Rips at the plate. Rips a nice at the bunt. Plate, Beautiful bunt down the first base line. Doesn't have a choice but throw it to first base for the sacrifice bunt. Did his job. Did his job. Move the runner open. Exactly right. So Brody Rips moves over Gavin Rips. Gavin Rips standing on second base with one out, and they'll bring to the plate the third baseman. Wesley Stevens. Stevens has grounded out the shortstop and flied out to center field. So Stevens is due. He squared up the ball a couple of times, but hasn't had it fall in place yet. All right. So Rips getting a huge lead over at second base already. As Stevens digs into left right-hander's batter's box. So nobody out. I'm sorry, one out with a sacrifice. Yep, one out. Stevens at the plate. First pitch to Stevens. Is going to be inside for ball one. So at this point, you got a runner on second. You want to play small ball. You may consider moving him over. But with yep. a hot hitter like Stevens, you may want to let him swing away. He does have a runner in scoring position, base hit, or hopefully score him, especially with the speed of Rips. So Rico checks on the runner over at second. Rips with a decent lead. He's going to kick and throw home. And it's going to mm -hmm. be an inside. Strike called on the inside for yep. strike one. Even the count at one and one. With one out, runner at second here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, if Stevens can hit behind the runner, uh, that's a good thing with Rips on the bag. He's fast. He could probably get her all the way around. Yeah. So the one-one pitch to Stevens. Rico's pitch oh. he steps off and goes to second base. Doesn't throw, but gets Rips to go back to the base, trying to hold him tight because he knows Rips is a threat over there. And Rips has shown it by getting a huge oh, lead. Huge. Probably a five or six step lead already over at first base, uh, second base. Rico comes into a stretch, checks his runner. 1-1 one, one pitch to Stevens is a curveball that goes into the oh, dirt. Good stop. It's a good stop by the catcher to keep it in front of him. Does not allow Rips to get the third base. And that's Miguel Adias behind the plate. Did a good job becoming a wall and blocking that pitch. So the count now two and one to Stevens with one out. Rips at second base. Again, we are in the top of the fifth. Rico with the pitch. Swung on by Stevens. Oh, it's going to be a fly a ball hit. to right field. Right fielder. Coming in oh, and he's going to go. Rips is going to tag up. The throw is going to be a good throw coming oh, to third. Oh, my goodness. He and slid Rips, under it. Rips slides under him. Good throw by the right fielder. Very One hop throw. all the way from deep right field to third base. But Rips goes around him and underneath him. Yeah, that was a good throw. Good throw by the right fielder. But, again, looks like Rips kind of got a late start, you know. Looks like he didn't get the jump that he normally would. but. I think he hesitated in yep. on, on tagging up, and he, yep. by the time he did, but his speed actually may have helped him there for sure. So they're going to walk Ramirez. Ramirez is going to be intentionally walked to put a runner at. I don't know why you intentionally walk someone to go first and third. I have no idea. Well, intentionally walk Manny Ramirez. One of the reasons is because he's been hitting the ball very well, and that will bring to the plate <coughs> number 18, the designated here, Justin Mayan. Mayan slide out to first base and has walked. Now, Justin 
First and third so situation First there. and third situation with two outs. Mayan at the plate. Rips at third. Ramirez at first. We're at the top of the fifth. Panthers trying to get another run across the plate here. You probably see the uh, Holding fake. Holding on to a 1-0 lead. Fake throw to second. Pitch on the way. Swung right through it. Oh, big Four swing. strike one. So man with a, Mayan with a big swing and a miss. Calls time, steps out as Coach Herb calls a play. Possibility double steal here. Mayan steps back in. Again, runners at first and third with two outs here in the top of the fifth. Catcher setting up way wow. outside, getting ready to throw down a second. They're going to waste a pitch here. There it is. And the successful steal. I think he calls it a strike. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how. So Mayan on the catcher's indifference, I think is what you call it, gets to – I'm sorry, that's uh, Ramirez gets to second base. Now the Panthers have two runners in scoring position for Mayan. Runners at second, runners at third. We do have two outs. Rico from the stretch. Checking his runner over at third. An 0-2 pitch on the way. It's curveball swung on. Oh, there's gonna a good hit. It's going to be a base hit in the left field. That's going to score one run. Maybe both. Oh, he's bringing him home. sending him. <clears throat> Not a throw to home plate. <clears throat> and Mayan makes a play. Ramirez scores. And I need a drink of water. Yeah. You talk about making the DH position uh, work for him. He really hit that ball. I mean, he squared it up right into the left center gap. <clears throat> I'm just not sure why that left – the left fielder didn't try to throw home. I mean, he was uh, had a good shot at it, but what a good hit. So two run RBI, uh, two RBIs for Mayan. Wow. Mayan comes to the plate. They, he makes them pay on the intentional walk. They intentionally walk yeah, Ramirez to get to, to pitch to Mayan, and he made them pay with the base hit that scored two runs. Panthers up 3-0 to zero now here in the top of the fifth. Did it with two outs. That will bring the plate J.D. Blair. Blair with a runner at first. First pitch to him. Swung oh. on. It's a fly ball to right field. Right field again. Chase is going to oh, be over his he, head. Over his head. Over his head. It's heading to the wall. They're going to wave on. Mayan. Mayan heading to home. The throw is on the way, and it's cut off, and he successfully makes it to the plate to score, and Blair will get to second base on the double. We're going to give Blair a double because that ball was hit to the wall, and the Panthers will score another run. So the Panthers have broken it wide open here. Yep. In the top of the fifth now with a lead now four to zero with two outs. Good opposite field hit. Absolutely it was a high outside pitch. Goodness. Blair took it to right field and hammered. He squirted it up and burned the right fielder, hit it over his head, and it bounced all the way to the wall. Right fielder looked like he just either lost it or just took the wrong angle, but he paid. <clears throat> Beautiful hit by Blair. I, I, I think he misjudged on how hard yeah. the ball was hit. So that'll bring Michael Newton, the shortstop, to the plate. He's flied out to second base and has had a base hit with Blair standing at second base. First pitch on the way is going to be high for ball one. Panthers coming through with some base hits here. Base hit by Mayan and a base hit by Blair this inning to go along with the intentional walk and the base hit by Gavin Rips. Ooh, that's high and inside, almost hit Newton. So Newton here with a hitter's count, 2-0, and o with a runner at second. Blair with a decent lead over at second. Nobody holding him on. Rico checks the runner, throws home. Swung on. It's going to be a fly ball in foul territory. First baseman giving chase oh, to the right side and not does gonna not get make there. the play. He was up against the dugout. He made a valiant effort, a sliding dive to try to get to that ball and couldn't get to it. So it'll be a strike on Newton. Pinch runner, 13 at second base. It's Gavidel. Gavidel at second base, pitch running for Blair now. So Newton will step back in with a 2-1 count. Gavidel at second base with a decent lead. <coughs> Rico checking the runner. 2-1 pitch on the way. Swung and a miss. Newton wanted that ball. He ripped at it. Swung right through it to even the count at 2-2. Two and two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
Panthers holding on to a 4-0 lead here in the top of the fifth, doing it all with two outs. We'll do it all over again. Rico checking the runner at second. Throws home with the curveball that stays outside. Way outside, as a matter of fact. So it'll bring the count to full. So the, we'll wait the payoff pitch here. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second. <clears throat> payoff pitch on the way from Rico. Swung on, fly ball in the infield. Second baseman calls everybody off. No problem for the second baseman to get the third out. So fly out to second base for the third out. And we're going to keep it right here. we got a couple of readers here. Yeah, fifth inning stretch. Let's go ahead and recognize Sunrise Restaurant. Family dining at its absolute best in Uvalde, Texas. Located at 510 West Main Street. They're open for breakfast and lunch. On your way through Uvalde, why don't you stop by and give them a shot. Uh, Mouth-watering breakfast and delicious lunch plates for you to try. Easy in, easy out. Panther fans will be making many trips through Uvalde, uh, and I think they need to stop in and check out the beautiful food they got there at the Sunrise Restaurant. And if you're in a hurry, you can call them at 830-278-6100 for to-go orders. Again, that's 830-278-6100. Go Panthers, and best of luck from the Sunrise Restaurant. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. How about Magnolia Filling Station? Awesome place right there in the heart of downtown Casterville. Um, features daily roast and Fiorella blend medium roast dri uh, drip coffee, lattes, iced lattes, cold brews, chai lattes, mochas, teas, and lemonades. Daily made from scratch pastries, and they are delicious. Muffins, cookies, cupcakes, and banana bread, just to name a few of the awesome items over there at the Magnolia Filling Station. Variety of sandwiches as well to include ham, turkey, Italian, and pimento cheese. Protein boxes as well, English muffins for breakfast, and fresh fruit parfaits. Here we go. Thank you, Magnolia Filling Station. Thanks to those sponsors and all our sponsors for sponsoring Panther Baseball. Dragons look up to the bat here in the bottom of the fifth, down 4-0, to zero, and they're bringing the plate to designated hitter number 24, Matthew Pena. Pena had a base hit last night off the bat. First pitch of him is taken for a strike, strike one. Great inning for the Panthers. Yeah, great, great inning great for the inning. Panthers. To scored to scratch off a couple of runs, put a nice crooked number up. Kind of broke yep. this game open here as it's getting late. Next pitch is a curveball in the dirt for ball one. So leaving the count at one and one. <clears throat> Magallanes back on the mound for the Panthers. And again, not pitching from the windup or, uh, with no one runners on. Going for the cho choosing to go from the stretch. Next pitch, ground ball to shortstop. Davis is there, feels it cleanly. Easy throw to first base to get the first out. So Benya grounds out to second base, and now they'll bring the plate to first base. Number 17, Joe Guzman. Joe Guzman struck out looking last time up the bat. Davis has a pretty good handle on the ball over there at second. He's made some really good plays. He's been a solid infielder for the Panthers this year. <clears throat> so Guzman steps up to the plate. Big right-handed batter. Mayan pitching from the stretch again. First pitch on the way. Strike right down right the middle. Good-looking pitch right there. Good-looking pitch. Good way to start out up in the count. No one pitch on the way. Inside. Takes Guzman out of the box. He steps back in. Yep, pushed him off the line, that's for sure. Even the count, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Here we are in the bottom of the fifth. Panthers up four to zero. Next pitch on the way is inside again. Same pitch. Same pitch, push, pushes Guzman out of the box. So Guzman at the plate now with a 2-0 pitch. Magallanes going from the stretch, comes set, pitch on the way. Swing oh, right beautiful. through it. Swing and a miss, he swung right through it. Backed him off the plate with those two inside pitches and then threw that one right down the pipe. Now leaving the count at two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and nobody out. I'm sorry, there's, there's one out. They had to ground out at second. 
Next pitch on the way. Ooh, just off the wow. outside corners. Blair tries to flame that, frame that ball. Didn't have to frame it much. No. It was just off the plate. Really good pitch. So that'll bring the count to full. So three balls, two strikes, one out. Magianis pitching from the windup. I mean from the stretch. Next pitch, ground ball. It's swung on. Just a little throw over to first oh, base. Oh, he still gets the play. Stumbled there because Stevens, just when I was getting ready to say it should be yeah. an easy ground <laughs> ball, Stevens bobbled it, but able to come through, pick up the ball, make a good, firm, hard throw over to first base to get out number two. Just so wanted ball to make it exciting for us. <clears throat> ground ball to third base for out number two, and it'll bring to the plate the pitcher, Alex Rico, number 14, struck out last time up to bat. So Rico, the number nine batter, comes up to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth with two outs. First pitch on the way to him is going to be a pitch on the outside corner for strike one. And just up four to zero. Again, we apologize, no scoreboard tonight. That's my bad. Did not load it up. But we'll you can blame me we'll if you want to. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep you up to date what's going on, I guarantee it. So next pitch is a ball, and I leave in the count at one and one. So one one count to Rico here with two outs. Malianis with the pitch. That stays high. Activity in the uh, bullpen for the Dragons. The count goes to two balls, one strike with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Panthers up four to zero. Malianis with the pitch. Swung on a little tapper foul. And that'll even the count at two and two. So darkness has officially set in. Yeah, it's officially <laughs> set in. Temperature's perfect right now. No wind hardly at all. Next pitch on the way. Strike oh, three, gets call him. strike three at the knees. Wow. Good pitch, good location by Magallanes. So call strike three, we'll get the third out. He gave him that one there. All right. So we'll take a break, come back for the top of the sixth inning. Panther Base will return after these messages. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castroville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castroville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Havy's Alsatian Bakery, online at havysbakery.com. The Medina Valley Sports Boosters are proud to support the Medina Valley Panthers. The Boosters are always looking for volunteers and new members. The MVP Boosters raise funds to support the MVISD sports and scholarship programs. Get your Panther swag at the football store located next to the concession stand. We have several items on sale. Join, volunteer, or purchase your Panther swag today at MVPBoosters.com. Back to Panther baseball. We are going to the top of the sixth inning. It's going to be a pitching change for the Dragons. I might add it's a North Park Chevrolet Dodson House Movie Construction broadcast of Panther baseball. So pitching change number two, Jaden Alfaro, the left fielder, will come in to pitch now. Alfaro, a left-handed pitcher. Panthers have not seen much left-handed pitching this season. He'll come to the mound, taking his warm-up pitches now. And Panthers will bring to the plate Marty Krieger and Rips. The bottom three of the order will come to the plate. The bottom three of the order has doing, been doing well. They're two for, two for three. The last time, actually, Marty is two for two. Krieger has flied out twice, and Rips is a base hit and got on on a fielder's choice. So they've been hitting the ball well, at least squaring it up. But new pitcher and left-handed pitcher being at that, we'll see how they they fare this time around. They started out a little slow, but boy, they sure found it here in the last inning or so. They're hitting the ball well. Let's see what they do with this left-hander. Again, we are in the top of the sixth inning. This game going by quickly. Mm -hmm. Panthers up four to zero. Marty steps in. 
First pitch from the lefty on the way to Marty. Taken forward ball one. Good velocity. He's throwing the ball. Looks like he's going to throw it pretty hard. So the 1-0 count to Marty. While Faro with the pitch. Strike right down the middle. Even the count at one and one. Marty digs back in. Faro getting his sign. He's going to pitch from the windup. Pitch from the lefty on the way. Strike two at the knees. Marty let two pitches go by. However, those pitches were on the corner. There, I mean, there weren't anything right yeah. down the middle. Yeah. That one was one of those borderline calls there. So one ball, two strikes to Marty here in the top of the sixth. Panthers up four to zero. Leadoff batter of the inning. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Popped straight up in the air over towards the Dragon dugout on the first base line. And it will drop oh harnessly to the, gr the ground. Both the catcher and the first baseman just watched it yeah. hit the carpet. It looked like it was going to be a little bit farther out, but it just dropped right well, in front of the little win there is right now, Johnny, is pushing it back on the Keeping it, yeah, because it went and up. I think that's what happened because the wind's obviously blowing stronger, wow. harder up in the air than it is down here at ground yep. level. They That'll bring the count to one ball, uh, keep the count at one ball, two strikes. Marty back in there. Alfaro back in the windup. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Another fly Another ball. To now the that right one's out of here. That one's out of play. Way out of play. It's over by my where I parked, actually. <laughs> I didn't hear any crash. Yeah. So we're probably all right. He hit my vehicle. I was going to charge. <laughs> charge Chad, the mound. Chad for that. <laughs> we'll do it all over again. One ball, two strikes to Marty. Uh, far off from the windup again. Pitch on the way. Curveball swung on. It'll tap her towards third base, but it's going to go foul. Fielded cleanly by Coach Herb. And a nice throw back yeah. into the pitcher. It's got quite an arm on it. Oop, oh, you're back on there. I don't know what's going on with that, but we lost audio there for a little bit, but we're good to go. So, again, we'll do it all over again. One ball, two strikes to Marty here. Nobody out. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Foul straight back. Battling tough, Marty is. Yeah, yeah Marty's doing a good job. He's getting a lot of pitches from that lefty, so he's seeing that ball better and better every time. So far, two for two tonight, doing an excellent job at the plate for the Panthers. Steps back in there with one ball, two strikes. Nobody out here in the top of the sixth. Alfaro, catcher setting up way outside. Pitch on the way. And it stays outside. Yeah, that's obviously a setup. It is. Yeah, he's waving his hand and trying to get Marty to. To not swing at it, but he actually brought the ball back in. So they even counted two and two for Marty. Alfaro with the pitch. Inside for ball three. Good job Ooh. by Marty. Great yeah. take by Marty. Great take. To fill the count up at three and two. And Marty steps back in with a full count. With nobody out here in the top of the sixth. Panthers up four to zero. Farrell gets the signs from the catcher. And pitch from the windup. Pitch on the way. Swung on by Marty, but it's fouled off again. Making Alfaro throw a lot of pitches just for this first batter. Yeah, he's doing a good job. It's got to be 10 pitches just for the first batter. Yeah. <clears throat> he is really battling. And those are good pitches. Payoff pitch again on the way to Marty. Swung on and fouled wow. straight back. He was just missed that pitch. I mean, he right was, under it. Yeah, he was right on it. As long as he's getting strikes, Marty is swinging the bat. <laughs> Marty adjusts his batting glove, steps back in here. We'll do it all over again. 3-2 count. Alfaro from the windup. Payoff pitch on the way. High. Oh, he four beat ball it. four. Yeah. His patience paid off. Good outstanding at bat by Ryan Marty. So I think he threw 10 or 11 pitches to Marty. Yeah. Marty finds his way on base for the third time tonight. So Krieger will step to the plate. Jaden Krieger playing left field. He did an excellent job pitching the other night. He'll step to the plate with Marty at first base. Marty needs to be careful with the left-handed pitcher. First pitch is going to be thrown home for strike one at the knees on Krieger.
Marty with a comfortable lead over at first. Alfaro gets his sign, throws home, swung on. It'll be a fly ball to Rush right field. Right field are giving chase, running hard up in. However, gets underneath it and catches the fly ball for Krieger. So that's three fly outs for Jaden Krieger tonight. So he flies out to right field. Marty stays at first base, and that'll bring to the plate the center fielder, Gavin Ritz. Gavin Ritz with a nice base hit last time up the bat. Yep. He'll come to the plate. Coach Herbo will give, give him, bark out some numbers to him for the, for signs. Gonna check his card, and he'll dig in to the right-hander's batter's box. <clears throat> Marty at first, one out, top of the sixth. Panthers up 4-0. First pitch rips on the way. It's going to be a strike. Good pitch. At the letters. So another sign by Coach Herb down the third baseline. Both the runner and the batter check their cards. Wonder what's on those cards. <laughs> Lots of numbers. <laughs> Lots of numbers. Alfaro in the stretch. Checks the runner over at first base. Kicks and throws home. Runner's going. Swung on. It was a hit and run. Little, oh tapper, to the, little tapper to the pitcher and gets by Alfaro. Wow. And <coughs> that'll allow Marty to get the second base. Pitcher had no and chance. And Rips is going to actually get on base with an infield base hit because the pitcher did not have a chance. No. Just a little tapper. Alfaro came off the mound, reaching to his left, and it kind of just went under his glove. He couldn't get to it. So now the Panthers have runners on first and second, another big opportunity. And it'll bring it back to the top of the order. Davis will step back in. That's actually Brody Rips, the other Rips. Oh, is it? Is yeah. It? Okay, so uh, Rips stays in the game at batting. First pitch on him, he's going to square around a bunny, bunch right through it, throw back down to second to try to get the runner. And he dropped the ball. The second baseman drops the ball and allowed Marty to get back on. He may have had a play there if he didn't drop the ball. Yeah, and he just, uh, you know, Brody Rips bunted Bunted him, uh, sacrifice bunt, last up at bat. So let's see what he does there. He, see if he tries to move those runners. So Rips will step back in with an 0-1 count. Runners at first and second. Off for all checking the runners. Throw to Rips. Oh. Rips swings the bat. It's going to be a, a ball hit out to left center. And the center fielder comes covers a lot of ground and comes up with it. Gets the fly out for out number two. Well hit ball. He squirted it up, just just a little bit too much elevation on it and gave an opportunity to the center fielder to catch up to it. So the runners stay put, first and second base now with two outs, and it'll bring the third baseman up to the plate, Wesley Stevens. <clears throat> Stevens is grounded out the shortstop, fly it out to center field, and fly it out to right field. So he's got the the fly balls down now. Now he needs to square one up and get a base <laughs> hit and try to score a run here with Fine two drive. outs. Again, Panthers up 4-0 to zero here at the top of the sixth. First pitch on the way. Stevens is taken for ball one. Runners up first and second. See what they can do with two outs. So Marty on second base. Rips on first base. Stevens at the plate. And the 0 1 pitch is on the way. And he checks swings and does not get the call. So it'll even the count the at one and one. Just stop short of. He, he turned his shoulders all the way around. Yeah, maybe that's <coughs> what it was. But the bat didn't follow. And the, the Southwest guys are kind of disappointed with that. Scoreboard says 0-2, but it should be 1-1. One one. Yep. Pitch on the way. There's a, there's a second strike. So <coughs> the count will go to 1-2 and two on Stevens. Six to runner, pitch on the way. He takes it for ball three. Three one now for Stevens. Stevens will step back in with runners at first and second and two outs. Alfaro will check his runner over at second base. Three one pitch on the way, swung on his tapper foul. And will bring the count to full.
So full count with two outs, runners at first and second. Tail pitch on the way to Stevens. Called strike oh three. My goodness. That was an inside. It was on the inside corner. Wow. Stevens kind of backed out a little bit. Wow, he didn't, didn't want to get, get hit. Call. So that will be out number three. Panthers leave two runners on, and we will go to the bottom of the six. Panthers up four to zero. Panthers. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459. Right now at Chevrolet's three-time dealer of the year, North Park Chevrolet. Get $15,000 off MSRP and 1.9% financing on new Silverado 1500 trucks, plus $2,250 in trade assistance cash, and $7,000 off MSRP on new Blazers. Lease a new Equinox for $299 with zero down or buy for $23,999. Get 2.1% financing on all new Traverses. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. And as the commercials just said, we'll go back to the North Park Chevrolet, Dotson House Moving and Construction broadcast of Panther Baseball. We are going to the bottom of the sixth. The Dragons down to the last six outs to try to get back in this game. Panthers up four to zero. Dragons will come back to the top of the line at the center fielder, Joe John Gonzalez, who has walked and grounded out the shortstop. Magallanes back on the mound again, pitching from the stretch again. First pitch to Gonzalez is outside for ball one. Next pitch on the way, it's gonna be in the dirt for ball two. Magallanes digs back in on the mound. Pitching to the lefty, Gonzalez. Pitch on the way, taken for ball three high. So three no count for Gonzalez. Magallanes is gonna come back with a strike here. <clears throat> 3-0 pitch on the way. Taken high for ball four. Just above the letters. Here comes Bradley. Coach Herb to chat with him. The time is called. Coach Herb is gonna walk out. Not sure if he's gonna do a pitching change. I didn't see anyone in the bullpen warming up. No Probably activity. gonna settle him down and maybe talk about some defense. That run's not gonna hurt you right there. So he needs to concentrate on the, the batter. Right. You're up four to nothing here in your bottom of the sixth. Just settle him down a little bit. Oh, he is gonna make a pitching change. Well, he's so Magallanes is, is gonna come off. Is he gonna bring uh, Newton in again or who are we bringing in? Oh, he's bringing in, we're getting, uh, Stevens is coming in to catch, so Blair may be pitching. Let's see what happens. So Stevens comes out of the dugout with catcher's gear on. So he apparently is going to move to catcher. And we are awaiting a pitcher. Well, typically uh, when Stevens comes out, uh, Blair goes to the mound, but. I'm not sure how much he's pitched this year. Yeah, I've yet to see him pitch this year. But it, he uh, had a you know, great the, the, year last year. The starting year. pitchers have gone so deep in these games yep. Yep. that you do not see many relievers come in. Yep. I mean, Newton has really been one of the few relievers I've seen come in the game. He's yep. done a great job. So we'll see who trots out on the mound. It must be Blair because he's taken all of his catcher's gear. Yeah, it is. And he's J. running J. out Blair. to the mound. mound. We need some. Well, we need should, some music right well, now. He, he should he be plenty, plenty loose after catching. So Stevens will come back behind the plate. Blair will step on the mound and take some warm-up pitches. Hey, we're just lucky to be on right now, Johnny, between you and I working this game. Yeah. <clears throat> both newbies to the computer world here I, when I typically <laughs> do the game. This, you got the B team here tonight, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. The A team is at home taking care of his kids tonight, rightfully so. Old Jared Lucky's got a, two beautiful baby girls that he's yeah. taking care of tonight. 
Well, we know how Brock Purdy turned out, right? <laughs> so we still got a shot. So we, Johnny and I are trying to do this gamma. That's one of the reasons we don't have the scoreboard on tonight. We're learning as we go, but so far so good. Other than the, bro the bad commentating, it's not been a bad yeah, broadcast. Bad. Well, this is interesting. This is probably the first time J.D. Blair's pitched this year uh, or in district. Well, and I haven't seen him in, well, I can't say because I haven't seen every game. I'm not sure. I I'm sure he pitched during the tournament time, yeah. which a lot of them yeah. do. But he's, I know he pitched quite a bit last year. So he's taking his warm pitches. Probably won't need many of them again because he was catching. Yep. So it's set everything up again. Panthers, are, we are in the bottom of the sixth. I know we don't have a scoreboard, so I'm going to try to keep you posted here. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Panthers up four to zero. Just made a pitching change. Magallanes, Magallanes will go to the dugout. Blair will come from the catcher's position. Blair it to the mound. Stevens will go from third base over to behind the plate well this is check the number this might be his brother Stevens it Stevens stayed at third so he came off the bench catching well there's uh, Warren Stevens and, and well, number West. one Wesley Stevens is staying over at third and then Warren behind the plate so we have Warren Stevens number I can't tell the catcher's gears on them I believe it's I Warren it's Stevens number seven yep. behind the plate so that's how things are set up. Again, four to zero, Panthers up. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The shortstop, Julius Castillo at the plate. Nice pitch. First pitch to Blair is gonna be called inside for ball wow. one. We got some more moving around. Um, number six, Prukop is over at first base now for Marty. And the next pitch by Blair to Castillo is going to be strike, so one and one count on the lefty Castillo. Castillo sector nice. for ball two. Nice breaking ball. Nice stop by the catcher. Yeah, nice we're stop. Assuming, we're assuming it's Stevens. Back on there? Yeah. Yeah, we're back on. Next pitch is going to be called a ball. So Prukok's over at first base. Pitch on the way, swung and a miss. Foul tipped into the catcher's mitt. So three balls, two strikes to Castillo. I'll try to get all these changes for you. There's quite a few of them actually. I'm not sure who's on second. I don't think it's Davis anymore on second. Next pitch on the way from Blair. He walked him. So two walks in a row, one by Blair and one by Magallanes. We'll put runners at first and second, and that'll bring to the plate Romeo Castillo, the third baseman, the brother of Julius Castillo. Romeo Castillo has ground out the second base and flight out to center field. So he'll step to the plate, left-handed batter with nobody out. Runners at first and second here in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch on the way to him. It's going to be a ground ball over towards third base. Fielded by Stevens. Thrown over to first base. High throw. Prukop comes down with it to get the out. Good play by Prukop to get the out over at first base. So Castillo grounds out to third base. But however, it does move the runners over. Runners on second and third now with one out. And it will bring to the plate the catcher, Miguel Arias, who's grounded out to third and grounded out to second, will step up to the plate. <coughs> Blair will pitch from the windup now with Brunners on second and third. First pitch to him is going to be a That's strike a on pitch. the outside corner. Good pitch. So Panthers up four to zero. However, the Dragons are trying to get back in this game with two runners in scoring position. Blair working quick. Next pitch on the way is going to be a curveball. Goes in the dirt, gets past the catcher. Oh, hurry. The Let's see. The home is going to be not thrown, and they will score a run on the wild pitch. So that pitch was in the dirt, the curveball that broke in the dirt. Catcher unable to, to keep it in front of him, and he will score the runner at third, and the runner at second move over to two-third base. So our score now is Medina Valley four, Southwest one. Got with one out. School board says two, I think. I think it's one out. Next pitch on the way to Adias is going to be a ball. Bring mm -hmm. the count to two and one. It is one out. It's hard to see that. It is hard. 
Blair from the windup, pitch on the way. Strike right down the middle, good pitch by Blair at the knees. That should even the count at two and two. With one out, runner at third. Dragons half score to run, or no score is four to one. Blair pitching quick, pitch on the way. Curveball swung on, just tapped by Adias to stay in it. Would have been ball four, I believe. Yeah, that was. Or ball three. It was definitely a ball. Yeah, it was a ball. He was just protecting himself with two strikes there. Ball probably would have been in the dirt if you wouldn't have swung at it. Mm -hmm. But we'll take it. We'll say good pitch by Blair there. <laughs> yeah. So the 2-2 pitch on the way. Ground ball to third base. Fielded by Stevens. Stevens checks the runner at third. Long throw good across the diamond. Scoop. And dug out by Prukop to get the second out and does not score the run. Nice job by Prukop. And what helped there, Johnny, was Stevens looked the runner back. Absolutely. Did not allow him to score. Checked yep. on the runner, then take a long throw across the diamond yep. just in time to get the second out. So good job, good heads up play there by Stevens. He did a good job of handling that ball. Yes. That's not an easy ball. The way it was bouncing, he uh, handled it, checked the runner, and made the, uh, made the throw. Made it look easy. There it is. There you go. It's right here. Is that the problem? Mess with that. Okay, we lost a little bit of audio there. Apologize for that. We have a loose connection apparently. So we got a one-two count with two outs, runner at third base. Pitch by Blair, swung on a ground ball to shortstop. Fielded by the shortstop, throw over to first base. Oh, nice. Just, oh. oh no, he bobbled the ball. It was a very outstretched crew cop at third base. Wow. And it just on the edge of his webbing the glove and fell out to score the run. So it's going to be an error on the throw. And that'll bring to the plate Joaquin Zamora to the plate with two outs and a runner at first. That score did run, so our new score is Medina Valley 4. Southwest two. Blair checking on the runner. Throws home, it's gonna be a ground ball back to shortstop. Shortstop throws over to second base to get the force out. Got him. The third out of the game. So ground ball to shortstop ends the inning for the Dragons. But however, they do get two runs. Our new score, Benny Alley four, Southwest two. And we'll come back after these messages. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Have you ever made a friend by accident? I know I have. This is Alec with Lone Star Towing of Natalia, and I just want to let y'all know that I pay top dollar for your junk, wrecked, and abandoned vehicles. I can even come to your location and tow it out of there at no extra charge. Give me a call at 210-777-0585, and I'll be sure to get you taken care of quickly. Welcome back to North Park Chevrolet, Dotson House Moving Construction Broadcast of Panther Baseball. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Not sure if you're not hearing the audio once in a while, but we have a, a sound connection that's not 
working all the time. We spoke a little bit too soon on how good the broadcast was going. <laughs> but we're going to go to the top of the seventh here. Panthers up 42. Southwest managed to get two runs there last inning to get back in the game. So Panthers would love to have an insurance run here going to the bottom of the seventh. Panthers will bring to the plate Ramirez, Mayan, and Blair. Well, let's see who they actually do bring to the plate. A lot of times late in these innings, Coach Herb will bring some, some subs off the bench to bat, and they've actually produced for them. Yeah, looks like Pargus is on deck. I think that's So Manny Ramirez will step in. Ramirez is fight out the center field, ground out shortstop, and intentionally walked. So he'll step up to the plate here in the top of the seventh. There's a pitch from Alfaro is on the way, swung on, and fouls straight back. So the lefty for the Dragons back on the mound again. Ramirez does some batting glove adjustments, steps back into the batter's box. Right-handed batter. Alfaro getting his signs from his catcher. Pitch from the windup to Ramirez. Oh, high pitch. And they're leaving the count at one ball, one strike. Again, we're in the top of the seventh. A score for Medina Valley, two for the Dragons. One, one count to Ramirez. The lefty's pitch is on the way. Swung on by Ramirez, fouled to the right side and goes out of play. Mm, that didn't sound good. So they'll run the count to one ball, two strikes, nobody out. I do see Mayan on deck, so he'll bat. Ramirez digs back in, awaiting the one-two pitch. Farrell sets and throws, swung on, fouled out of play again to the right side, over towards the concession stand. Ramirez steps out of the batter's box. Just his helmet, gets ready, steps back. Not quite back in yet, now he steps in. And we'll do it all over again, one ball, two strikes. Catcher setting up outside. Alfaro from the windup, pitch on the way. Swing and a oh. miss for the strikeout. Ramirez strikes out and all the brings yeah. the plate, the designated hitter, Justin Mayen. Yep, Mayen he is, is man. Flight out the first base, walked and got a huge base huge hit, last, hit last, yeah. last time up to bat. Justin. Mayen. Mayen steps in. Alfaro back on the rubber. And first pitch to Mayen is on the way. That's gonna be ball one inside. Got a good looking pitch though, wouldn't it? Look good from here. So 1 0 pitch on the way. Be taken for ball too low. So good at bat so far for Mayan. Yeah, he squared one up earlier. I think he brought in two, two runs, huh? Sitting with a hitter's count here, 2 0, with nobody out, or one out, I'm sorry in the top of the seventh. Pitch on the way, swung on. Pops straight up in the air and it's gonna go out of play behind us. And they have ran out of baseball, so. Oh boy. Here comes one in from the dugout. Yeah, that happens a lot. But I mean, it, one of our, bat uh, who was it that battled in? That was Marty. 11 pitches and yeah. six foul balls. I believe that was Marty that rang them all, yeah. on all those pitches. He cost uh, the Dragons about $40 in baseballs <laughs> right there. <laughs> if not more. Mine will step back in with a 2-1 count. Alfaro with the pitch. Swung on, a hard shot to send to the shortstop. Shortstop feels it on one hop, throws over to first base to get out number two. So we'll ground out to shortstop for two quick outs for the Dragons and that'll bring to the plate. Number nine, number nine. Oh, J.D. Blair. Blair. Blair was the catcher, now he is the pitcher of record. He'll step up the plate, slide out to left field, walked and hit a double. Opposite field, beautiful hit. 
Let's see if we can do it again. Alfaro with the first pitch to Blair. Curveball stays high for ball one. Again, we're in the top of the seventh. Panthers up four to two. Dragons scored two runs last half inning to get back in the game. There's two outs, a 1-0 count to Blair. 1-0 pitch is on the way. It's in there for strike one, even the count at one and one. Wind has picked up a little bit, kind of cooled things off. Blair awaiting the 1-1 pitch, taken inside for ball two. Carl steps off the mound. Now he's back on the rubber. Blair digs back in, awaiting the 2-1 pitch. 2-1 pitch on the way. Swung on by Blair. It's going to be a fly ball behind shortstop towards left field. Shortstop moving back and makes the play. Wow, that back was in no man's land there. Yeah, that could have been dangerous for the Dragons. But three up, three down. Panthers go down without a runner on, and we will go to the bottom of the seventh. Panther baseball will return after these messages. Are you ready for a vacation? Tanya with Travel by Design can help you with all your vacation destination needs. At no cost to you, she can plan all of the details tailored to your unique wants and needs. So all you have to do is enjoy your vacation. Tanya is a certified expert with Disney Universal Orlando and California, Sandals, and all cruise lines. Give Tanya a call at 830-931-4834 or visit her Facebook page, Tanya with Travel by Design, for all the latest specials and must-do vacations. There's power in the simplest of actions. Like one neighbor helping another. Where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything at Medina Electric Cooperative, and we're grateful for your trust. To provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Medina Electric Cooperative is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your source for power and information. Welcome back to the North Park Chevrolet Dodson House Movie Construction broadcast of Panther Baseball. This is the half inning we've been waiting for. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Panthers up four to two. Dragons down to the last three outs. They will bring to the plate Benya, Guzman, and Rico to the plate. J.D. Blair on the mound again for the Panthers. Blair able to get him out of a jam the last inning where the Dragons did score two runs. Taking one more warm-up throw. It's been a good game so far. Very got good. It got kind of stagnant there in the middle, but the Dragons have worked their way back into this game. Yeah, sure have. Made it interesting. Definitely made it interesting. Panthers looking to keep their perfect record intact. And I go. I think, believe it will try to go to 9-0 in district play. Dragons fighting to stay in it and to challenge for that district championship. They're sitting at 6-2 and two in district right now. Mia Valley is 8-0. So Matthew Pena will step to the plate, the designated hitter for the Dragons, who has had a base hit and ground, uh, hit a ground ball to second base for a ground out. First pitch on the way is going to be oh, a curveball nice that drops curve in ball. there for strike one. Out. Yeah, nice curveball there. Benya steps back in. And the 0-1 pitch is on the way by Blair. Another curveball roped oh to left boy. field but foul. He put a charge into that ball, but it stayed foul. Line shot out there. He got a hold of that one. Either way, it's a long strike. That'll move the count to 0-2. <laughs> Blair's way ahead now. Yeah, Blair way ahead of the count now. Benya digs it back in for the 0-2 pitch. 
Blair pitching from the windup and pitches on the way. Curveball pops straight up in the air. It's going to fade foul just out of play. We'll keep it there at 0-2 here in the bottom of the seventh. Guzman awaiting on deck for the Dragons. They'll two pitch to Pena on the way. Call oh, strike three beautiful gets pitch. him on the inside corner for the first out. Beautiful pitch by J.D. Blair. Wow, he reared back and threw that ball and hit that inside corner. So the first baseman, or 17, Joe Guzman will step to the plate. He struck out looking the first time up the bat and grounded out to third base the second time up the bat. So he'll come to the plate for the third time tonight here in the bottom of the seventh with the Panthers up 4-2 down the last two outs for the Dragons. Curveball started off by Blair and it'll go low below for ball one. Blair looking to work quick, already in the windup. Second pitch on the way, another curveball that stays low. For ball two. Now Blair's got to come back and, and try to throw some strikes here. You get this late in the game, you got an out, you're down the last th two outs, you don't want to be fancy. Next pitch on the way, it's a fastball on the outside corner, and he's got the count of three and oh. So another ball on the outside corner after the two curveballs that went into the dirt. He's really throwing that ball with some velocity. I mean, as a catcher, he's got a great arm, you can tell. So 3-0 pitch on the way. And that's gonna be all outside for ball four. So Guzman walks on four straight pitches, and that'll bring to the plate Alex Rico, the, the starting pitcher for. Let's see, Rico actually does come. No, it's gonna be number change one. Him out to number one. They got a pinch one, runner. Number one is Jacob Blanquise. So Blanquise will come to the plate for Rico. Looks like they got a pinch runner as well, Dwayne. I can't see his number. Looks like number nine, Timothy Olagu. Olagu? Close enough. Yeah, well, at least it's, pinch run. it's not Gavadel. We Sorry. got that one. We got that one down. First pitch by Blair to Blanquise is going to be a strike on the outside corner. So the Dragons have a runner on. So they're trying to stay in this game with two, with one out. One out. Oh, look at Blair. He's going to take this thing home so himself. Blair goes quickly 0-2 on Blanquise. So with one out, 0-2 count on Blanquise, runner on first. We're here in the bottom of the seventh. Panthers up 4-2. Blair checks on the runner up first, not a big lead. Pitch on the way, curveball, swing and a miss. Oh, Strikes got him, him out on a nasty curveball. So yeah. Blanquise goes down and that'll bring the Dragons to the top of the order where they're last out. Down to one out, the center fielder, Joe John Gonzalez comes to plate. His walk, ground out the shortstop and walked again. So Blair checking his runner, working quick, not a big lead, pitch on the way. Curveball, four strike Oh, he one. gave it to him, yes. It was a strike, that was a good pitch by Yes, Blair. broke right over the plate. So the Dragons down their last two strikes. Blair checks on the runner, kicks, throws home. Fastball, wow. fouled straight back, four strike two. Now the Dragons down their last out. Gonzalez sitting with an 0-2 count, runner at first. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Down to the last strike, Panthers up four to two. Tying run is at the plate. Blair checks the runner, throws home. Swings oh. and fouls it off to the left side on a defensive swing just to stay in. Yeah, a little slap shot there. Gonzalez, left-handed batter. Just trying to get a piece of that to stay in the game here. So the 0-2 count stays the same. Blair checks the runner, comes home. Swing oh. and fouls it straight back. He's barely, barely making contact with that ball. So four straight strikes thrown by Blair. Last two were fouled off. Keeps the count still at 0-2 with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. 
Runner on, Panthers up 42. Big lead now by the runner. Curveball swung on, it's gonna ground ball. It's oh, gonna hit the runner. No. It hits the runner who was it stealing. Hits. And he is out. The runner took off on his steal and the ball hits him on the hard hit. It was going to be a base hit by Gonzalez. Wow. And that's gonna do the game and that's how it's finished. A nice hit there by Gonzalez and it hits the runner who's stealing second to finish the game. Yeah, so that that's ball, gonna do it. That ball gets through, that runner may end up on third Absolutely. base there. That we would was have a different ball game if yes. it doesn't hit the runner. Oh, when it's not your day, it's not your day. So we're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back to close things out. Panthers win four to two. There's power in the simplest of actions. Like one neighbor helping another. Where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything at Medina Electric Cooperative and we're grateful for your trust. To provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Medina Electric Cooperative is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your source for power and information. Welcome back to Panther Baseball. Yeah. Welcome back to Panther Baseball. Panthers win against the Southwest Dragons with a score of four to two. Panthers move to nine and zero oh with a perfect district record of nine and zero. Oh. Dragons move down to six and three. So the Panthers Panthers have a nice, comfortable three-game lead in district play. So we'll do a a we need to do a player of the game here, Mr. Guzman. I don't know if you can hear me, but. So we look up and down the lineup, we had some really clutch hitting by the Panthers. Yeah, I'd say J.D. Blair, that's my vote. Well, and, and, and I will agree with you. We'll give it to the catcher, J.D. Blair, for his defense behind the plate, yes. on the mound, and yep. he did get a, a Nice base hit, a double as a matter of fact, that, that got him some RBIs. Yep. So the player of the game is gonna be J.D. Blair tonight, who had an outstanding game. Again, Panthers win 4-2 over the Southwest Dragons, and the player of the game is sponsored by Tanya's Travel by Design. I'd like to thank all our sponsors here this for this baseball game. I'd like to thank my co-host here, Johnny Guzman. You had the B team working for you all tonight. We got through <laughs> it with not too much difficulty. Next, next up for the Panthers. So Panthers win four to two here. Yeah, there you go. Next up for the Panthers will be at Harlandale on Tuesday, next Tuesday, followed by at Medina Valley against McCollum. So Tuesday at Harlandale and home game is McCollum on Friday. So Panthers getting comfortably through so far the last first two games of the second half of district play. So we're gonna leave it at that. For Johnny Guzman, I am Dwayne Garza. We'd like to thank all our sponsors tonight and we're gonna say good night and God bless and see you next time Panther Baseball is on the air. <laughs>